On today's episode of Aqua Kids, we're taking you to school. So, ready to make a difference? Building a better planet starts with you. Welcome to another awesome episode of Aqua Kids. I'm Isabeau. And I'm Katie. And today we're here at the Bridgeport Aquaculture School. So we really are going back to school. I told you. But this isn't your average school. This is specifically for aquaculture. Aquaculture. That's agriculture in the water, right? You got it. You ready to go learn some more? Yeah, let's go. All right, come on. The Bridgeport Regional Aquaculture High School is located in Bridgeport, Connecticut. It is only one out of three aquaculture high schools in the state. Many students from the area attend this school to take their science classes and even gain college credit. The school hopes to give students the opportunity to expand their knowledge of the aquatic environment and learn about society's relationship with that environment. It is a place where a diverse array of students can come together to work towards a common goal. I'm here with John Curtis, who's the director of the Bridgeport Aquaculture School. So John, tell me, what was the idea behind starting the school and how did that idea turn into this? Well, way back in 1988, it was, a, um, it, was a, it was a group of professionals, politicians, educators that decided to uh, establish a, a new high school with the theme of aquaculture to teach science and technology. And it was, uh, it, it was the intent to bring in uh, a mix of urban and suburban students into the Bridgeport yeah. District and uh, to explore uh, or to inform students of emerging uh, industry in aquaculture, the need for aquaculture to uh, produce product for uh, our own consumption and, uh, and the global market. Well, thank you so much for talking with me today. It looks like Rachel's talking to one of your students right now. We're here with Titania Green, a student from Bridgeport Regional High School. Now, Titania, tell me, you go to an aquaculture high school. Why did you decide to do that? I decided to come to aquaculture in eighth grade because my math teacher actually was a student here and he had Mr. Shadow, my Baca teacher right now, and he kept ranting and raving about what's, how it was like a great school and the unique opportunities and courses they offer here. Very cool. So what sorts of classes do you take? Freshman year, they kind of set you up the basic classes like biology and tech, but I wasn't really much of a tech person, so I chose to double up on my sciences as years progressed. Um, throughout the years, my sophomore year, I took chemistry and ecology. My um, junior year, I took physics and culture of marine species. And then as um, in my senior year, which I'm in now, I'm doing the BACA program, which is the Bridgeport Aquaculture College Alliance. So you get to take UConn Environmental Science first semester and then UConn Oceanography the second semester. Very cool. So do you feel more prepared for college now because you took the classes here at this high school? Definitely. Um, what I'm trying to pursue is a major in environmental studies. So taking environmental science and actually getting the credit is saving me money and giving me like a foot ahead of other students who haven't taken the course yet. And also taking oceanography because I want to specialize in water resources. And at my school, they don't even have an oceanography course wow. that I'm going to. Wow, that's really cool. So can you tell me a little bit about a project that you're working on? Yes. I. In the BACA program, along with taking the Yukon courses, you have to um, take on an independent research project. So for my project, I was testing the environmental strategy nutrient bioextraction, which is just a strategy in which you take nutrients out of an aquatic ecosystem through the introduction of macroalgae or shellfish. For my project, I used eastern oysters and blue mussels. It was to help, it was to address the issue of hypoxia in the Long Island Sound, because as you probably know, um, in the Lyon Sound, um, there's low dissolved oxygen levels because of a process called eutrophication. Eutrophication is basically when there's excess nutrients in the water and the algae take in that nutrients and the population grows. And the more algae you have thriving, the more algae you have dying. And as they die through the process of decomposition, they're taking up that oxygen in the water and resulting in hypoxia. So certain organisms will leave and ones that are um, sessile are left under environmental stress. Wow, so you're really learning a lot here. Yes. Very unique things, too. Now, what types of students attend here, and where do they come from? 
There are um, different kids from different towns. We have Bridgeport students, Fairfield students, and Trumbull students. They all come through bus. Um, the types of students that I've been around in my classes are the type that are really determined. They know what they want to do. They know what they have to do to get their work done. They're like basically the kids that are stay up all night to study for a test rather right. than go to a party. Well, Titania, thanks so much for speaking with us and good luck with everything you want to do in your future. Thank you. I'm here now with Brian, who's a junior at the school. So Brian, what made you want to come to this really cool school? Well, when I was in eighth grade, I was really interested in marine biology and I saw that the school had tons of classes to offer about it. Yeah. So I took classes here and then sophomore year, we had this convention for biotechnology. I was looking at the projects they were doing and it really interested me. Yeah, well, so did you change your like course of study? Yeah, I, I decided that I was really interested in biotechnology now. So that's what you're going for now? Yeah. So what do you plan on doing with that after you leave the school? Well, I plan on majoring in like biotechnology or biomed. That's really cool. Well, I went to a very average high school, did, took many, many different classes, very different than this. Do you think do you, that you missed out any by uh, going here? Not at all. We, we spend half, half of the school day at our normal school, and then after lunch we go here. So oh, you're getting like the best worlds. of both worlds. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much, and best of luck with the rest of the year. Thank you. So we're here now with Jake, and he's a student at the Bridgeport Aquaculture High School. So Jake, tell us why you come here. Well, I come here because I really love science, and this high school would be a unique experience right. for me, for college and all that. Mm -hmm. And Mrs. Ford o came to my high school in Monroe and told us about it, this wonderful establishment. Mm -hmm. And I really love the program and love the idea of it, so mm -hmm. that's why I came here. So what kind of classes do they offer here? Well, I've taken biology here, and I they also have ecology and culturing of marine species, where they grow fish and other oh, algae. Mm -hmm. And then there's also two chemistry classes. There's Chem 1 and Chem 2. Mm -hmm. And they're just really high-level courses, but yes. the teachers are great here, and it's really fun. So how do you fit all these classes into your schedule? Well, I go to my original high school in Monroe for the mm -hmm. first half of the day. And then for the second half, I come here and do take my science courses, mm -hmm. and then I leave here at 120 to get back to my home school. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. So with all this background knowledge, do you have any plans for the future? Yeah, I would. I want to go to Florida Institute of Technology to mm -hmm. become a marine biologist oh, nice. because I just loved animals ever since I was young. But with mm -hmm. allergies, I can't work with a lot of animals, so marine animals were the best bet for me. Yeah. Well, Jake, thank you for joining us today, and what an awesome opportunity to come to this high school. Thank you, it's been a pleasure talking to you. <laughs> Don't go away. When we return, you'll see how fish go from here to here. AquaKids presents another AquaKids pop quiz. For this pop quiz, we're going in slow motion. So which is the world's slowest fish? Is it A, the blobfish, B, the seahorse, or C, the frogfish? Take your time. I'll be back with the answer after the break. Don't swim away yet. There's a lot more to come. So stick around. Aqua Kids will be right back. 